And we're back. Time to make an uh, enemy. Give him some health. And make him suffer when we shoot him. Then explode into a glorious fireball. So, I'm going to use the standard assets car. Called the sky car. It's located under sample assets. Vehicles, car. And then we're going to use the model here. We're not going to use the prefab because there's a bunch of scripts and stuff on it we don't want to strip off. So we're just going to use the regular old sky car for now. And uh, this doesn't have anything on it. Not even a collider or nothing. So let's just add a box collider here. And let's scale this thing up. Eh, it looks about right. Yep. That's about as big as a barn door. So if we can't hit that, uh, we need to stop playing video games. All right, let's give it an FSM. And what we're going to do here is we're going to set up, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can set up, uh, you know, health management and collisions and weapons and, you know, sharing the damage and all this stuff. And uh, what we're going to do here is is just one method, okay? So you're going to find a lot of ways to do this, but this way is going to be where the missile is going to hit the car. And whenever the missile gets into a collision event, it's going to trigger and then send a message to whatever it hit and that message is going to trigger an event inside that object so in the cars case it's going to send an event which we're going to create here called uh, missile hit all right and this little box you're going to want to make sure this is checked so that you can find it in the in the missile when you go to set that up okay so we'll need a variable for health it's going to be a float, and we'll just set it up to 100. And just a tip, too, you can turn this on to expose it in the inspector. So when you're going through and you're optimizing whatever system you have, it might be nice to have these exposed over here in the inspector so that you don't have to dig through these variables and such, because you probably have a lot of variables on this guy after a while. So if you expose it over here in the inspector, you can access it a lot easier and then just change it right there without having to go in here. So just FYI there. All right, so in the first state, nothing's really happening, nothing exciting. Uh, let's add another event for the case where he runs out of health because we need an event for when he gets hit by the missile, which we got, and then we need an event for when he runs completely out of health. So no more health. We're going to add missile hit here, and we're going to add no more health. So let's put a state here and a state here. No more health goes here, and a missile hit goes here. So when the missile hits, it's going to cost him some health. So let's do float subtract. Pick the health variable here. And we can just subtract. We know this is a missile because it's firing the missile hit. So if this were bullets, we would just set up to fire bullet hit. And then it would go to a different event where it would subtract a different quantity. And you could also set these up to be exposed in the inspector and everything. So let's say the missile does eh, 20 damage. Yeah, that'll be cool. After he's done, let's say he's finished and he rolls back to this state. Now when he gets back here, there's some health has gone missing, right? So let's do a float compare. And let's compare the health variable to zero. So that if he ever runs completely out of health, some event will fire. That event is no more health. So let's just say no more health on zero, whereas it's equal to zero right here. So you'll say what you're comparing it to, and then if it's equal, then it fires the event. But also if it's less than, because if, say, he has 10 health, and it subtracts 20, he's got negative 10, comes back to here, it's not equal to zero. So what do we do? Well, it doesn't do anything. It just sits here. So if it's also less than, then we're also going to fire the event. We don't, I don't think we need to do this every frame, because he'll be jumping out of the event to do the damage, and then coming back, and this will run to do the check again. So it's pretty cheap. Now, if he runs out of health, he's going to have to explode into a glorious fireball. So we're going to create object, 
And there is a fantastic explosion just waiting to be used here under sample assets, effects, particle systems, prefabs. Explosion. Just drag it on over there. And for the spawn point, just choose a sky car. And then when we uh, make this thing a prefab, any instantiations of that will be the active, uh, active owner there. All right. After you make this wonderful explosion, come to a new state. You don't necessarily have to do this. You can do it in the same state, but just for organization purposes, I like doing it this way. Destroy self. There we go. So if he runs out of health, he makes an explosion and then jumps to destroying himself. It's a wonderful cycle of events. Now on the missiles, we're going to have to set up where they send an event when they hit something. Now to, you can do this specifically and you know, for each type of enemy or each tag, you can, you can set this up on collision tags. You know, if you wanted enemies to be on different layers, uh, for tagging, then you could do that and then send messages only to those tags when he hits those tags, you know. So if you had, for instance, a wall, well, when a missile hits the wall, just blow up. You don't have to bother sending the health. And then if it hits, say, enemies and they're made out of metal, then it sends a specific event for that. You know, we could you could get all kinds of crazy here, but we're not going to get into that right here on this particular method because it's not necessary. So on our mega missile prefab, uh, what we're going to do is say, we're going to add a new transition, and it's under system events here. It's called collision enter under system events. You just pop it in there, and then make a new state and drag it over there. So if this prefab has any kind of collision whatsoever, the system sends this over to this state. And that way you don't have to set up you know, your standard... Uh, collision event actions here to filter on a tag. You could certainly do it this way and you know it's it's the way that uh, I've used it before. It works great. But for this case we'll just keep it real simple and just go with this and we're going to watch how it works. So after it hits this guy, collision has occurred, right? So we need to tell it it needs to send a message. So we're going to do send event And we're also going to need to, normally with uh, collision event here, back up just a little bit. Collision event, you can also store the collider directly out of this. So I've got a variable in here on this missile uh, called we hit this. So whatever it hits, I intended to store it here in this variable. So that in this state, I can say uh, get collision info and store the game object that's hit right there. And then now you can choose game object on the target, specify, we hit this. So it's going to store this information. Then in send event, it's going to send it to that variable, which will be stored when it's collided. All right. And then you'll send message. And this is why you check that little box next to the event on the on the other FSM. So that you'll see missile hit right here. It's a global event, so now it can be used in this drop down by other uh, FSMs. If it wasn't a global event, you could still send it, but you would have to send it by name, which is this command. And so you could just type in whatever you wanted to send here. And that works if you got, you know, some funny situations where you can't really know what you're hitting, or you just choose to set it up this way. That's fine too. So now we have uh, collision enter. This can go away. We have collision enter, jumping over to this state. We're collecting the information from the collision. And we're saying the object that we just ran into, we're going to send an event to it. And then after that's done, we'll add our next state, finished, destroy self. And a missile will die. Uh, we're not going to make an explosion 
for the missile yet because we only have one missile prefab and it's uh it looks ridiculous so uh i think that should work um sky car subtract create object missile hit no more health yeah that should work fine let's try it out Ooh, that was beautiful let's try that again oh yeah i like that we should do more of that much more of that Yeah, yeah, this works great. I like this. Yeah, <laughs> this pleases me. All right, so let's recap. We got this sky car in its idle state. It has a float compare. And when it runs out of health, it kills itself. The missile is sending a message called missile hit. Every time it hits a collider, so even if it hits a wall, it's going to send this this event to it. But obviously the wall doesn't have health or any sense of what this is going to be. So the sky car is going to pick this up when it's hit and subtract some health from it. Roll back to here, and when it runs out, it just dies. Let's see. You can also watch it in the game view. See it bouncing? There it goes. Ta-da! All right, cool. Onward to the next video.